Okay, so welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. We're kind of just pulling things together, thinking together about what to do over the summer. And I've actually, I have a proposed workshop. I don't know if we can do it together or not, but I will talk about it. And then we can talk about if we want to try it or not. Okay. Okay. Does that sound right? But Chris, mm -hmm. do you want to, what have you, have you been asked to do on the 11th month or sometime? Uh, yeah. Um, there's a blended learning educator conference that I am uh, presenting at. And so um, I'm going to do two sessions. One is um, channeling your teacher heroes into online spaces. And then the other one's going to be uh, what was, I did it last year for them. And Wait, say that slower. Wait, what was the first one? <laughs> so um, my one, um, so it's like a blended learning conference yeah, uh, yeah. sponsored by Arizona State. And um, it's a lot of, you know, digital tech. So one session I'm going to do is just let's remember our teacher heroes, you know, like these people that we had uh, who taught us at one time and, you know, they made these significant impacts, you know, like I can teach it. I can think of my second grade teacher, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's like, what were the qualities of those people who we look to as like these, you know, teacher heroes. And then uh, my thing is like, well, how can you channel that? How can you re represent similar kinds of vibes in an online space? So that's, that's one hour. Uh, but then another hour is going to be on um, last year. I did something on just annotating. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought I would actually change it up this year and do something with um, writing partners. And it's only an hour. So, yeah. All right. Christina, can you do you want to talk to what you're doing with journalism? Because maybe you and uh, Chris should talk to because he's interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, right now, well, just sort of kicking off in a few places in the country is our rural journalism uh, initiative. And actually, this initiative has been a few years old. So there's, but there's new sites involved in it this, this year. And they... Um, are sort of rural and small towns um, supporting kids in publishing and publishing to a Writing Our Future website or um, KQED, mm -hmm. kind of maybe both. Um, but there are a set of modules because the project, some sites have done it before. There are a set of sort of student facing modules that we're putting together and a few teacher guides. Um, and the modules are kind of, um, you know, sort of picking up on different sort of processes and procedures that you can do. So if, like if you did all the modules, you'd, you'd do a bunch of different activities. And I was thinking um, that AI should be in there, you know, sort of different things that you can try with AI with the different modules. Um, as an option. So anyway, I was, that's what I was going to ask you all for input on. And I, I haven't really looked in there yet to see what kind of journalistic modules there already are. Mm -hmm. um, so. are there, Christina, are there, if you were to invent modules, knowing what you know of journalism practices and media literacy and so forth, are there things you would think that could be particularly fruitful if you could sort of invent prompts or provocations with AI or is it is that a is that a is that question misguided because you really should be speaking about your syllabus well no it's more about sort of looking at like I mean there might be certain prompts but I was wondering if there are sort of revision tools that have already been developed and used in a journalistic mm -hmm. context or if there are some right. um you know, uh, brainstorming tools or, you know, um, I'm trying to think the other, um, the tutor or something that are about asking, you know, take observing or doing interviews or something like that. I don't know what we've, we might've developed already. And then I weave those into, sorry. Uh, it might've worked. 
sorry, I'm like multitasking here. I'm a little distracted. Um, so, uh, so I was thinking about what could we weave in as kind of an alternative um, thing that you might try, you know, um, with these different. So I wasn't necessarily looking to develop something if we already right. had it. Sure. No, it makes sense. If yeah, it makes sense. That's it, this seems to be a particularly useful application of a thinking partner. Like you get to a certain point in a process with a bunch of expertise. You know, everyone on these calls sort of explains what they put together in terms of their content expertise or their lines of thinking, and then sort of deploying a thinking partner to sort of move something forward when it's a roadblock or towards the end of an assignment or something seems particularly fruitful. It's very applied. So, yeah. Yeah. And I do, in terms of media literacy, just to say for a second, though, I do have these, like, I kind of pulled out the media literacy pieces all together. And I also think there's some media literacy stuff that I want to help, like, put, to connect to these modules to help navigate AI. And what right. I realized when I started doing that was that I realized I don't actually have a lot of questions myself. I was like, oh, yeah, like, what? What is Creative Commons like in the day of AI? Like, how do I guide, you know, that kind of stuff anymore? You know, yeah. I didn't know how to do that. And now I'm like, oh, wait, we're in a new day now. This is like different stuff. So anyway, just because you mentioned media literacy, I wanted to say that I feel like there's like new media literacy questions that I still don't have my head around. So yeah. that's another set of questions. Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, I think just to, to stay with that Creative Commons question, I mean, the MIT license for software, just to think of software, which is fundamentally a remixable medium, right? Yeah. And then there's that MIT license that sort of presumes things being open source and remixed with citation and yeah. derivative works and so forth. I mean, that's a pretty articulated little castle there. But I think to your point, it gets completely shaken up to think that a stroke of a key, you're sort of establishing all that precedent and then more potentially, right? Or yeah, maybe a whole or, bunch of stuff, whatever you need. You know, yeah, like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> may, I mean, it would be really great to sit around with a bunch of Berkman people or whomever actually tries to parse this as a jurisprudence exercise and see, but it's, I, I was just emailing a lawyer about these questions and, you know, his comment was, IP issues have become extraordinarily complex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Sorry. I. Go ahead, teacher. I remember I had something. I think it was for the. I wrote. A, I created for the say something uh, mm -hmm. pieces, which I had a partner that would read your piece and then find areas where you were lacking, like uh, in in terms of like explanation or depth. I don't remember. Yes, I think it was the, uh, it, yeah, it was the Say Something Feedback Partner I created, um, which kind of just gave me, gave ideas as to where, like, where you're kind of missing things. Like, I wrote a piece about, I, I wrote a piece about, like, uh, competition in, like, the streaming industry, mm -hmm. uh, like Netflix and Disney Plus and all that. Yeah. So I forgot, I also mentioned, like, um, independent creators and that, like, YouTube and Twitch and all that, like all those new platforms where people are creating content. And so I've, it gave me feedback on that. Like, uh, um, in my original, I put in my original article and then it gave me three key points to expand. Um, it said that I should have had additional context in the, um, fragmentation of media. I should have expanded the, uh, the, uh, I should have, delve deeper in the economic impacts of of um of this of like the uh it was the economic impacts on of the of uh like like what's happening with the a lowering of like ratings and stuff in newer movies and tv shows uh -huh. and like almost a feeling of older franchises becoming sort of stale and then also I should have highlighted the adversity that independent creators had to overcome. So those were like three key areas where I thought I should have improved upon. And I think looking back, I probably should have included that in the first draft, but that's did, what I did. you ever get time to follow up on that? Yeah, I did. I actually included it in the final piece. Wow. 
That's good. So that was one VP partner I found particularly useful. I don't <clears throat> when I was looking through the list, I wasn't able to find it. What, Christina? I think he said it was called Say Something, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was the uh, the project. On now comment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was like the so all, all the work, all the work that we did around um, the whatever we call it now, <laughs> around the uh, Israel Hamas war, right? Was was all about journalism. Oh right, 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 right. And so um, you know, part, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say part. So one of the things that journalists that we have stolen from journalists, but we can give it back in some way, is um, is uh, you know thinking about the stakeholder of this article. Um, and in fact, so developing stakeholders, writing is a mm -hmm. possibility to think about That's um, in journalism, I think. Cool. And Chris, you've thought about that some. And I'll, yeah. the, the last thing I'll say is that um, one of the one of uh, Aditya's um, colleagues, <laughs> um, peers, um, took her TED talk and asked somebody who would and created a thinking partner using our matrix for it. Um, somebody who would totally disagree with her in her TED talk, and then she—I don't know what she's going to do with that. But that's that's an interesting possibility at any point. I think I also did that with the debate stuff. I did the side switch partner. Yeah, it's similar between arguments and just. I think the words I use were a judge who vehemently disagrees with you. Yeah, yeah that's, that one of the modules is perspectives is based on that KQED mm -hmm. uh, perspective show. You know. If, so. uh, on a slightly unrelated note, you, I, I, something Chris, just popped in my head yeah. as you mentioned the Israel Hamas war. So yeah. I was at my cousin's graduation like this weekend. He's graduating from college, and what, co what college? Uh, Swarthmore in Pennsylvania. Okay. So he so like at the at his graduation, there was like just tons of protesters and things. Because mm -hmm. like I think. Uh, it's one like it's like especially in Pencil among Pen Pennsylvania colleges, Swarthmore is one is in a college. Like I was reading the articles after the ceremony, where protests have been slightly more active. Like compared, we compared to other colleges. Like it wasn't like mm -hmm. these protests have been particularly active in like Columbia and uh, uh, UCLA. I think were two prime examples. But then other universities like Penn State and all have like not really had as much, uh, you know protests and things. I think Swarthmore was definitely, definitely there was a lot of protesting happening at the uh, graduation ceremony. And you saw that? Yeah, yeah. We were actually, I didn't see it because protesters were sitting one row behind us. <laughs> okay. So, but I can hear it. Swarthmore is an interesting place. It has a um, peace archive and a peace program. Yeah. So I think I don't know. I'd be curious, like, if people are tapping into that. But anyway, it is. Yeah, I think like the valedict, like they had like a class speaker, and the class speaker I think was in that like their like peace and war studies, or was there like major or something like that? Yeah, it's a peace studies major. Yeah. So I think that was that was the major of the class speaker. Wow. Well, cool. Chris, what have you been thinking about journalism and AI? Um. Yeah. So. Uh, I teach journalism too. So uh, there's some thoughts there. So one of the things I did this year with my English class was the open letter uh, mm -hmm. and kind of letter to the editor, but an open letter. And so it was based on New York Times had the open letter contest. We didn't really okay. enter the contest, but we uh, did. And I had them do an open letter assignment. And um, I'd be happy to share that with you, Christina. That would be uh, awesome. Yeah. Because, you know, there is a writing partner. There's two writing partners, Open Letter Contest Judge Simulator and the Open Letter Revision Coach. Oh, um, yeah. And, and, you know, that seems pretty appropriate for, you know, not only rural journalism, but any journalism, but, but definitely speaking to local issues. And like Paul mentioned earlier, um, there is the idea of um, like a personal entreaty to stakeholders, like, Whatever right. this issue is, it's it's typically a local issue, and there are people who 
would have to pay for it or people who would be impacted by whatever environmental changes might take place. And so, yeah, um, yeah. so that one, um, I, I think we had a pretty good time with that one. And, and there are some um, uh, AI things and writing partners that could go along with that. Oh, that's perfect. I think there are, there, there, there are at least a half a dozen. Um, some of them created by you, some created by um, the creators in New Jersey, which I keep saying. Um, so one was created by Jill, and I created one based on the rubric that from the New York Times. So, yeah, the Open Letters Group is a is a possibility. That's think, great to think through, I guess. And with um, any opinion piece, yeah. I think the multiple perspectives teammate would come in handy too. Yeah. Uh, right, right, right. So multiple perspectives is different than the say something that so it's it's less oppositional, it's more just like what are the range of perspectives? Is that right? So for the say something, our uh one that I did was it was actually like a very simple prompt, like it's like <laughs> words. I think it's um Use eighth grade vocabulary. Talk like an eighth grade English teacher. Give two to three helpful pieces of feedback on what areas require additional research and expansion. It was like a very simple prompt, but it did work effectively. Um, that one was mostly about uh, what can you improve on, not particularly about what others might say or what other perspectives. Oh, got it. Okay. But more about what other information could be out there. Got it. Got it. Got it. Great. Yeah. Okay. Super helpful. And um, multiple perspectives is more about like my students typically will think in terms of a pro con, like, you know, I'm for or against something, but the multiple perspective prods them to, it, you know, find viewpoints. Um, maybe they're a little more nuanced. Yeah, that's great. Okay. The one, the and one, then, in, and then it the one actually in asks for help to find sources that could do that. Mm -hmm. That's the one in writing partners? Uh-huh. Or... I think that yeah. might actually be useful. But, like one thing that like I've noticed in debate is that me and most of my peers usually end up thinking pro con because that's what sides we're debating on. But I feel like there's definitely been situations where a more nuanced viewpoint could have helped our case. So we just, I think, I don't think it was like right before I start, uh, it was like the middle of April, I had a debate where it was about uh, frog dissection. And it was, should frog dissection in schools be banned? So we we ended up having to debate the point of it not being banned. And the way we kind of approached it was, okay, alternatives are bad, therefore we can't ban frog dissection. But the judge <laughs> told us when the judge was giving it, but we lost. And the judge gave us the feedback that if you would have approached it more as, well, these alternatives are good, but we shouldn't ban frog dissection just because the alternatives exist if we would have approached it with a more middle ground viewpoint one where both frog dissection and frog dissection alternatives like simulations exist and are being utilized in the classroom that would have won us the debate mm -hmm. and so i think definitely thinking of it less as a hard line yes no and more of a yes and will would definitely have been helpful in, in many cases mm -hmm. cool. mm -hmm. so you have to make a writing partner good. like that that's a, yes, good title for partner, yeah. Yeah, that's a good writing partner title. Yeah. Terry Elliott created one like that, but yeah, you could do that again. No reason. Um, so there is a community of practice on um, writing partners. And um, I wanted to talk to Chris about the possibility of using that, but also wanted to see what you all thought. But Christina, it would it we could either talk it through or we could try it. <laughs> um, are could you do some writing or not? Or are you too multitask? Um, yeah. <laughs> no. No. Okay. I have Good another here. minute. Sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. I'm just saying. So up up above is so. Should I show and then if you want to do, you can. Will that work? Sure. Okay. Hey, Paul, I should say I, I'm going to have to yeah, go as go. well. No, yeah, I'm going to have to take off. I'm sorry oh, I no. can't see you guys. It's nice to see you. Good. Chris, are you done with school? Yeah, 
uh, today right. was our last contract day. So. All right. Well, enjoy your summer. I'll hopefully see you around. It'll be fun to hear what you do. Nice to see Thanks. you all. Have a good evening. Yeah. Bye. Bye, you guys. Okay. Sorry, Paul. I can watch for. No, no. Okay. Yeah. So let's do that. I'll, I'll just show a little bit and you'll give me feedback on the workshop idea. Does okay. that sound okay? Yeah. Rather Great. than doing it. I think, I think that'll work. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to. How to show this and i think i know but it didn't it's just taking me time to get there um i need that one and i need to go to kuma space and i need to start dissertation where is it where's the one oh here it is okay okay you, do you see on your screen community practice? Aditya, uh, you, yeah. should, you should join this community practice with your email address. Uh, okay, so should I just um, create a writing partner's account? Yeah, so on the table there, there is a the, the writing partner's um, logo takes you to the community practice. Okay, writing partner's logo takes you to community practice. Uh, I think, okay. I think I'm, am I able to, let's see what happens during this period. I think it's letting me join with my supervised account. Okay, so fine. <laughs> For now, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so here's what I want to show. Um, trying to think about, um, and this is something that we talked about last week, but trying to think about how to get people to choose different writing partners. And Aditya, you had some notion of a um, consumer uh, support person, right? Um, yeah, uh, we just that was, that was like. Yeah. Um, also, your screen like seems to be frozen, like the screen share. It's just showing like a zoomed out thing, like kind of here. It's not actually showing me the whole thing. Okay, thank you for telling. Uh, I don't want. It just moved like, like yeah, yeah, it's moving now. Is it working now? I, no, I, it's like pivoting, and it's not yeah. size. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. I'll try again. <laughs> Present window desktop. Oh, it's on. Um, Here we go. I chose the wrong thing. I think. There. Is that good now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're not a member of this yet, you're, let me just quickly do um, the framework, right? So the idea is that that um, if you click this right here, you'll go to an article that's in the, I think it's Harvard, yeah, the Harvard Business Review this month. And it, it, uh, it discusses five different kinds of questions that a leader might ask of the people there being a mentor to it, right? With me there? Uh -huh. um, okay. So here are the, f there's an investigative coach, a speculative coach, productive coach, interpretive coach, and subjective coach. So one thing you could do is you could put something up and you could um, uh, put a piece of writing up and then you could choose one of these coaches. But given the advice from last week, what I did, and I'll show you, is let's look at there's a there are three samples for you to play with here. Here is it's actually Marina, but here's a third grade teacher's um, reflection, um, right? And I'm going to go through this quickly. If you need me to slow down somewhere, I will. Um, we created this week based on people's thoughts last week a teacher coach picker. So you, you choose in this one paragraph, but you choose the whole document. And then it says, hey, your re reflection on your third graders seems to be a, a subjective, might be your best coach to talk to right now. It picks from the five based on your writing, right? And then you can say, oh, subjective coach, what do you think? And then it uh, gives you feedback, gives you questions. 
and thoughts about all of all of your 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 reflection in this case. Does that make some sense? Yeah. All right. So there's like. Go ahead. Feedback, thoughts, and I'll show you a couple of others. You got Jack's attention, so. No, no, just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's like the concierge approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, and I did check it. So here's one. It's a curriculum letter. Much more detailed, I'll say quickly. But here's the things I want to do. This was written by a pre-service teacher, um, a letter to his teacher, right, a cooperating teacher. And this one decides, this one did, I didn't go further with it, but this one ended up asking the productive coach questions. It suggests, hey, go check out the productive coach. So you have some ideas, but you need to kind of see how it could, could happen, right? Just to review quickly, look, you know, it's, it asks, what are the next steps? What do you need to do before taking... Do you have the resources? So it kind of gets kind of very practical. Fair enough. And the third example here is logs by a graduate student, a pre-service program. And just as I'll just say quickly, so you don't have to read it through the whole thing. She um, talks about work she's doing in her classes, but she also talks about going to the beach, talk about this and that, right? Um, it's her logs from the week. And we asked the, oh, it was called a question selector at that time. All right. And it uh, it suggests to her which one, the interpretive coach, right? But it also says why. We think the interpretive coach would be helpful to you. So I present this and think about this as what could happen in each of the groups. So Aditya, before, before we started recording, I asked Aditya if he wanted to put together a debate coach, a set of coaches or, or writing partners. Yeah. And to think about like the list of them is one idea, but then to think about, somebody said a concierge, to think about a writing partner that identifies, oh, you wrote this, why don't you try this one, is, is one idea to think about. I think, yes. yeah. My one thing for debate specifically is that the way I currently have a structure, it's not like there's multiple really partners to choose from. It's like, it's like in this, it's like almost a tree almost, mm -hmm. where like there's multiple different branches you can go at, multiple different partners to pick, multiple different routes to go down. But in the case of debate, it's more like a light pole, kind of just keep going and go up and up and up until you have a fully developed, I, until you have a fully developed argument. So uh -huh. I feel like that would be, the concierge only really comes into effect when you have like a, a choice. I, so in this case, I, yeah, maybe. Like, Go ahead. I really am struggling to think how I would use a concierge if I only have one option. I'd be more like, I think what would be more effective is putting in an article like, here's how you do this, and then kind of giving the giving everybody in the group instructions like, okay, this is what this partner does. This is what that partner does. This is what that partner does. So the workflow is use this, 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 and then this. But in the future, if we have like a different set, like, oh, you can try this more emotional partner or this more logical partner. I think that's when that would come into play. Cool. But in its current state, not right now. Um, one one yeah, thing I, I could see if we go back to Christina's journalistic idea, mm -hmm. one of the things that my students often um, struggle with first off is, are they writing a news story? Or are they writing an opinion story? So, um, asking, you know, like, yeah, that's a good one. Some feedback on which way are you headed here? Um, mm -hmm. would, would maybe be helpful for a real common thing that I see. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, I mean, that's something that I do. I ask them, but you know, like <clears throat> early in a draft, that that might be helpful too before I even see it. Yep. Um, I'm not sure. We can come back to this notion. Uh, Paul, I had a question yeah, about go your um, please. Yeah, go ahead. Process there. So yeah. it seems like you ask which which coach should I uh, would help me, right? But then 
in one of them, did I get it right where it actually said you would benefit from the productive coach and here's what the productive coach would say? Or or is it a two-step process? So it, it, has, it does a little bit. There's a little paragraph. I asked it to keep it concise in three paragraphs, right? Okay. Um, it does, I think it does say, for example, you state this, the productive coach can help you determine the next steps. It, it kind okay. of introduces you briefly. Okay. So then I would decide, is that the, is that good you, advice for me to pursue with that person? Okay. Right. Then it says, so let's get practical. Do you want to invite the productive coach in? Then you would go to re reply with AI. You would choose the productive coach and, and continue the dialogue. Okay. And, and these are, these are teaching coaches, right? Or yes. Okay. Um, but that well, really, yeah, they could be used for any creative process. Is that like right? leadership coaches? I mean, you got it from Harvard, so it's sort of a leadership thing. Yeah, it's 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 you're a you're a coach. It's kinds of questions good coaches ask, and and so their article is about balancing the kinds of questions you ask. Like if you if you only ask productive coaches, you're not going to get anywhere. Sometimes you need to ask subjective kinds of questions. So, yeah, so what I want to, what I'm trying to think is, as I click here, is that you do, I think at some point you do need to understand the matrix, right? I'm just like read through this and get some sense, but I don't think it's that hard to get the differences here, is it? And it doesn't have to be these five differences. It could be, you know, some other I differences. think yeah. it's more so about identifying when each, like sometimes it can be a little more confusing as to when each different comes in, uh, if I'm phrasing this correctly, each difference is coming into play rather than what each difference is. So I think uh -huh. that even if someone through and through understands what each of the coaches are, the partner would still be useful in cases where they can't decide, is it the subjective coach or the productive coach or the speculative coach? That's when it kind of comes in, like giving a little more clarity. Yeah. Let me um. Let me um pull back for a second and have bring bring forward a dialogue that we that David and I had with Bob Montgomery and then Andrea Zellner, um, and I'm gonna uh, try to not share anymore. How do I do that? I, oh, I know what I'm doing. Sorry. Do I know what I'm doing? So the question is, or not the question, but what we're kind of beginning to understand, I think, is, I mean, we've developed this system, right, on these this site um, just because that's what we live in, right? Um, and it's been great feedback, and there are some... Um, I actually created a something at DTA. I, I want to show you that to a DTA, where it summarizes a um, a prompt for us. Um, you suggested that. <laughs> uh, this seems to be glitching. Can I come back in like one second? Sure, sure. All right. The difference between what we're doing and a bot has become an interesting conversation that I just wanted to put out there. So. Um, uh, if you, the di one difference is we start with the writing. <laughs> we start with the creative process that you're doing and you either put it up or you put it in a discussion area, which um, on the table there, there's a choice to do one or the other. And then you interact with your peers, you interact with the teacher. There could be other kinds of comments made. And then eventually you bring in the, the AI partner. And the AI partner doesn't go back and forth with you. It gives you like a one shot. Maybe it gives you three shots. But by the time it's done with three comments, it starts repeating itself. It's not interesting anymore. Um, is that, I'm finding that distinction interesting. I think in a classroom, there could be a place for bots, but there could also be a place for what we're doing here. Is that distinction interesting or 
worth pursuing. We were talking about last week with um, that other site. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's, I, I was talking about with Mr. Ronsky this morning. Mm-hmm. On one hand, I feel like it's like one feels like more hand holding, so to speak, than the other. This one feels more like you kind of know what you're doing and you're kind of running with it. Again, like you said, it's like the thing we are living. The other one feels more like, okay, if you're using this like once or twice and you don't, or this is your first time and you don't truly understand how this works. Which is which? I'm not clear. Like in the, I, I was thinking about it from what we were talking about the other day with the bot that kind of starts you off, tells you how to go, and versus the bot that just asks for your feedback and then just gives you the feedback it's programmed to give. One is like now comment, right. where it's like you kind of need to know what each bot does in order to use it. The other yep. one is, what was it, other, was it like Playgrounds or yeah. Play, Play Lab? I forgot what Play it Lab. was. It's Play Lab, yep. Play, Play Lab, where it's, okay, here's what I'm supposed to do. Uh... This is the shit that I'm supposed to do. Um, insert this, and I'll tell you, and then I'll give you this option of this, 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 or this, mm-hmm. and then go from there. So one feels more yeah, like, I, and like, I don't I, one more what one feels more like you've done this before, you know, like now comment and writing partners are like for if you know if you've programmed the bot yourself, if you know the person who programmed the bot and you understand kind of. How to how to use it. The other one, like Play Lab, feels more like okay, this is a random bot I found with uh, someone make someone made no explanation. I can just go in and use it. So one of them feels more immediately intuitive, whereas one of them gives you more like advanced options for the future. Yeah. If you kind of understand what I'm. I do. I do understand. Um, and I'm. We're just putting out this. This idea and trying to figure out, you know, what what's more appropriate for at different stages in a process, a creative process, right? Is talking to a bot more appropriate, or is it just getting a one shot next to your to your text more appropriate? And which gives you more agency is the question that we're beginning to ask. And we yeah. don't have answers yet, but go ahead, yeah. Paul, one of the things uh, that that question of the difference between what you're doing in a bot maybe got to one of the things I was thinking about with your with the coaches. Mm-hmm. Co- coaching is, uh, in its essence, you know, a dialogue. Uh, why, 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 for example, the the Harvard Business Review focused on the sorts of questions you ask because you're, co- you're always trying to elicit, elicit, you know, elicit a dialogue and 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 in mm-hmm. you know, various ways. Um, your the, the writing partners are really trying to elicit a they, they, you start with a draft and you're trying to elicit a new draft you're trying to you're trying to provoke uh, you know revision or change or 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 or, or, or dialogue broad, broader that. thinking or something but well but actually not not an ongoing dialogue like like Paul said a, after a couple goes mm-hmm. with about the same piece of writing you could give it a, you, you you go back to your piece of writing and 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 you write that so so I guess the coaching thing, I mean, it seems it seems limited in that sense. To, I mean, it seems very interesting to do in a coaching in a in a teacher coaching setting when a teacher writes like end of year reflections, but mm-hmm. without a, without a piece of written work first, it doesn't. It's it's not really a teacher coach. Um, it's more of a writing. It's more of a what 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 can we talk about? What 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 strikes me about this piece of writing? I don't know. That that it seemed like a. When I was thinking about a bot, I think what? Like a, a back and forth dialogue as opposed to this sort of feedback. Uh huh. And which is a bot? The bot. The bot is the back and forth dialogue. It's constantly evolving based on what they're saying. Uh-huh. But both. But the piece of writing takes some time. You 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 come with an artifact that's taken some time to create. You get some feedback on it. You leave. You work on that artifact. You can come back for more feedback, or you can ask for feedback from another source. But but you're working with an artifact. Yeah. You know, I think from an education point of view, it, it supports it supports writing more. It makes the, it centers student work. 
as opposed but, to a dialogue. You know, I don't, I don't know. But, but yeah, yeah, I maybe I think so. It's a it's a good point. I um the the other piece to put in there is that a peer could jump in or a teacher could jump in, whereas when you're talking to a bot, that's less likely, right? I don't know if they can be designed so that a teacher could jump into the conversation or not. But a bot is like you and 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 this it's a good thing and whatever. I'm not making judgment, but with a bot, you're going back and forth individually. Um, what we're trying to promote is the idea that, and I'll refer to the workshop that's on the whiteboard above, but you write some, you write, you keep writing some, you get a peer or a teacher to comment on that. And then, and then as you're thinking about all of those comments, you decide, oh, I want to, you know, let me go pick a, a coach to give me feedback, an AI coach. And that could be like one third of the process. The other two thirds could absolutely be humans giving you feedback, right? And that feels that feels like it's beginning to feel to me like I want to I want to hold on to that, right? Because the industry is throwing bots at us, right? And so I I think that's worth saying. When, when people think of AI, they think of bots, right? And I think there are other ways, other form factors that could we could use. Well, I yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about the fact that, the, I mean, I don't think I'm saying anything new, but um, the fact that there is an artifact seems to me to be sort of different too, right? Like, I mean, now common because it, it's based on an annotation platform. Mm -hmm. You know, with the sort of digital discourse focus on um, annotation is and uh, dialogue, you know, within the text, with the text. Directly. Right. So you're kind of already in this like s space where you have to bring something, you know. I mean, I guess you can yeah, use I a comment without anything, but you really need to bring something, right? Yes. Just because of what the platform is. Yeah. I think, so. I think a lot of it is really subjective, like person to person, task to task. There are tasks where I feel now comment is definitely more effective. There are tasks where I feel to some extent that sometimes a chat bot can be more effective. And yep. also, like, I know there are some friends of mine who gravitate more, like they prefer using chat GPT compared to now comment. Uh, I definitely have some friends who who are like that. Like if they're doing something on their own, they're much more likely to probably use a now comment as I mean ChatGPT as opposed to now comment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, no, what you said first is really important that you can that you can decide when a bot is better or when now comment is better. It feels like a, a a really positive position to be in. Like an example that I find a chat bot for, format better would mm -hmm. be when I'm prepping for a test and I just like quickly want to just throw, throw a, just copy and paste my study guide in and just ask it to generate me some questions rather than purpose building a bot for that specific task. Like uh, a bot just to help me with my math or a bot just to help me with my English. I think it's just way too much of a hassle for something that I'm probably only, only going to ever use once or twice, maybe a few times, but like space, but not really use as frequently. So for those purposes, I find a chat, just a general purpose, like a chat bot more convenient. Mm -hmm. And then like other things like the debate prep, I'd much rather have purpose built bots instead of re-entering the same prompt every single time. Mm-hmm. So it really depends, in my opinion, from task to task. I think that's really clear. Let me let me try to show you what I think you. Um, gosh, I wish there was an intuitive way to do this. I, every time I okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen again, and I'm gonna go to window, and I have that one open, and it is right here. Okay. Okay, then I do what? I hit this. And you see these tools here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So 
Bob Montgomery suggested we start talking, and so let's use his, that we, that we put some of these up and start talking to each other about how we build, um, think, how we build writing partners, right? But Aditya, you then suggested <laughs> maybe we could ask it to ask, ask a writing partner to look at, so this is Bob Montgomery's UDL Habits of Mind writing partner, right? You are an experienced UDL practitioner. Here's your three things. Don't make me choose. And then, and then eventually, there's it goes into things. Works pretty well, but we could analyze it here, right? Is everyone clear on what this is so far? Yeah. One thing I'm just noticing: uh, some yeah. of my prompts are literally three sentences. The, I the, yeah, I don't know. Don't know how much you'd be able to like think about that when it's like you'd be surprised. <laughs> but okay. yeah. With like two of those are like formatting and like how you're supposed to speak, and the other one's like just give me feedback. <laughs> I just literally one of my partners. Right. So and I'm a big advocate of what I would call, and others are too, of those ill-defined prompts and then building from them but yeah fair enough but i did create so we've been thinking for some time and i'll show you this um to define um these writing partners by persona purpose process and product so what this writing partner description tool does is it reads reads the prompt over here that goes on for you know a page and a half and it and it says it, what what the persona is. It says what the purpose of it is. It defines the process that it's finding and the product, right? And then it gives you a little summary. Choosing this writing partner will let you do this. Trying to get better and better at making transparent what the writing partner does, so you can choose it. Should I slow down, or is that more or less clear what this is doing. So it's taking the prompt and kind of explaining each aspect of it. Yep. Interesting. Wonder what happens if you run that prompt through itself? <laughs> you run I, that prompt through itself? I, I wonder. What I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of. Oh, here's what. I wanted to also. So, quick, uh, and I'm watching the time here, but you, now if you create a new writing partner here, this this um, link right above the create writing partner. So, Bob was looking for some template, and I think others are too, some template for how to write these, right? Do you, do you, is, do you see the pop up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't always know on Kumas, but so this then asks you what discipline will this writing partner have? What's their training? What's their vibe? Right? So we can keep recasting these and think about if these make sense. But to my mind, they make sense. And then, but so we have to try them and see. Any thoughts about this? This is. Seems helpful, yeah. Yeah, I think someone who's building a thinking partner for the first time, it kind of provides some place to go before they can start to like experiment, like create your first partner and then go from there, rather than just like putting some stuff down and then just kind of. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we should probably put at the top. You don't have to do all of this, right? <laughs> this is. Yeah, th this is just a suggestion in big red bold letters. <laughs> All right. Paul? Yes. Um, early on, this is just a thought. Early on, you had mm. that sort of like, don't do damage, care, blah, blah, blah. It's still there, yeah. Could that be part of that? Uh-huh, that... Thinking that, part of analysis thing? Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Except the writer doesn't do that. It's the it's the model that does it. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But maybe. I mean, it's a pretty complex, it's a pretty complicated thought, but that a prompt could create could correct bias and right wrong things. By the way, the model we're using now goes up through October 2023. But um, in terms of data, yeah, wasn't it like previously like September 2021 or something like when it yeah. first like, launched? Yeah, and and three five was uh, was April 2022. They're up to yeah, so that, yeah. it'll keep it'll keep growing. Oh. So you have yeah. the open letters right on the front here. Yeah, so th that's worth describing briefly. So the I wanted to mention the um, multiple sources comes out of C3WP. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody any anybody on the site could join any of these groups, but then they they give you they give you those thinking partners, right? So if you if you join Open Letters, you'll get the the writing partners that are associated with with Open Letters. Oh, that's great. Okay, so but, if I if I um, integrate uh, these things into the student facing modules, I would point them to this assistant. And yeah. what? Where do I point like a teacher? Do I point a teacher here or a student here or what? What what is your what is? This I think point? I think I, th I think you would need a teacher. I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I was able to join the other group without a teacher though. So, yeah, I know. A student letters or you, you if you want to manage that, we can figure that out. But a teacher should do it, and then they would bring a group of students in. Okay. Um, just to identify, this this group up here is Jess Early's um, chapter four of her book, uh, right? And so there, there's a summer camp that's that's using thinking partners, writing partners. Um, there, um, there's a habits of mind group that we've developed out. There's a C3WP. Bot Builders is uh, some elementary school. One of the things we're starting to do, I'll show you this also, is identifying the people who are building these things. Oh, nice. So that I think that'll be kind of a smart thing to be thinking oh. about. And, oh. then, and then just go back to Aditya. Just want to, so that we're going to make a debate group here as well. And does that make sense, Aditya? Yeah, okay. yeah, I see. And you get to credit, and Aditya gets credit, right? Yes. Yes. And we're thinking about how to do that within each each writing partner too, but right now we're just putting it there in the group. And universal design for learning is something that Andrea Zoner is helping us develop and think through. Oh, cool. So, so I, I just think that having these specific thinking or writing partners is a, a good way to they're like modules, right? It's used yeah. the word modules earlier. So uh, yes, this is great. And is there, have you thought about doing the sign up process like we do on writing our future? You know, where you like the teacher signs up, a site signs up, someone 18 plus signs up a site. So it could be a camp or whatever. Um, and then you get a code, and the code is what you give the students. Huh. Um, yeah, there's that's a possibility. There, there are a lot of yes. We haven't thought exactly that, but it, it works well, and it sort of forces that that process. So they join a group based on the code. Oh, based on code, and it keeps you from collecting any of their data, no emails, no anything, you know? Yeah, we already, yeah, there is, we've talked about this, that, like Aditya is on here as a managed user, so Jill runs his, yeah. Um, 
it's just an upload with a so what about like when I yes, upload CSV? Okay. What about when I like um, move it's on? a it's an upload we do for them, so I don't know. What I think are you using? So I have a question. When, for example, when a student moves on from their uh, from their teachers, for example, next year I'm not gonna have this unless something happens and like she ends up going to the high school. <laughs> In all odds, I'm probably not going to have Ms. Deronsky as my teacher, unfortunately. Yeah. So what would happen to my managed account? Would she still manage it? Or are you going to like, or are you going to like, um, we'll, fund... we'll probably, we'll probably leave it there. Okay. And, and just to know, and this is worth understanding that now comment will always be what we'll call the sandbox, right? Yeah. Where people can do things, but if you're if you're a managed user, you just the teacher just goes in and creates a username, right? And they so it, it's not as easy as what you were saying, but it is possible to do. There are all of Jill Sadronsky's students are on like that, and all of um, Marina's students are on like that at this point. Hmm. Okay. But just, um, and since I've, I spend my mornings every day working through the data protection stuff and the privacy stuff, it, you still have to protect, because they're still putting up information about themselves. Um, yeah, so no, we've had that too. Yeah, what, do you have to, you have to review it? No, in fact, <laughs> Should I stop recording? No, um, if you do review it, you become a content provider. If you don't review it, it's up to the school to manage it. Oh, interesting, right. Um, I mean, there's that one, but anyway. We're, yeah, so did, Chris, are you still here? I just want, no, oh, Chris, he had to go, he had to go. Good, good, yeah. okay. I just didn't want to hold, so I don't want to hold anybody here. Okay. Uh, but. Well, thanks, Paul. And, um, yeah. I might have more questions just in terms of this particular project. I mean, it, it and it may be that we could set up a journalism group that you know, it would be Chris Sloan and you and others who are building that group. I don't know. Okay, but we could think about that. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Thank you, um, Aditya. You good? Thanks for coming by, man. Yeah. And um, when you. And by the way, by the way, part of part of why I'm going to meet with your assistant principal and a couple of tech people are coming to it also is I'm going to tell I'm going to ask him what happens to these students who get really excited about AI in eighth grade and they go to ninth grade. Um, so anyway, it'll be a good conversation and maybe we can invite you over to be part of it. Okay, cool. Have a uh, have a great have a great night. Okay. Me too. Bye. Good night.